Holiday music wouldn't be the same without bells, and neither would the season itself. Despite the massive technological change the world has experienced, the art of bell making and bell ringing remains much as it has for hundreds, even thousands of years. We met up with some of those keeping this ancient art alive. For more than a century, the striking of clappers against the side of these bronze bells has been ringing vibrations across Upper Montclair, New Jersey. Oftentimes, churches don't have real bells in their bell tower. Sean Price is the director of music ministries at St. James Episcopal Church. So it's very special to me to have actual real bells playing all the time. This has to be different. Yeah, it's truly a hands-on approach. Price is a classically trained harpsichordist. But to learn how to tickle these keys, he had to take his training up to a whole new level. There's a console set up on the second floor of the tower where I'm pushing a lever that's attached to a cord that's then attached to a pulley system that moves the clapper that hits the side of the bell. That intricate system which feeds the 11 bells above needed to be repaired. And it's no wonder. The bells have been in use ever since they were installed by the McShane Bell Company. The bells were cast in 1918. When James Andrew acquired the McShane foundry, he took possession of the company's ledgers that date back to 1870. The interesting thing is these bells were actually shipped via B&O Railroad. Some will say canal, so if they went on the Erie Canal or by boat. Unfortunately, we don't know how much they cost, and some of the original ledgers do show what each bell was charged for. One float. I used to tell people that if my wife and I both rode Harley Davidson's, that would cost more than what I had in my bell collection. Still, Neil Geppinger says he spent tens of thousands of dollars amassing a collection of bells big and small. As his collection of bells grew, so did his interest in their history. Geppinger cataloged his vast collection in a self-published book, Large Bells of America, A History of Bells and the Foundries that Made Them. He traces the earliest foundries in America to Paul Revere, who used bronze recycled from cannons to make bells after the Revolutionary War. Geppinger still owns one of Revere's bells. It's one of just a few he's holding on to. My favorite bell of my collection from the standpoint of the sound is a 39-inch diameter machine. It's just got a gorgeous tone. They cast their bells just a little thicker than their competitors did. Music to the ears of James Andrue. So is this a disappearing art form then? Casting bells? While it is a disappearing art form, I don't think it will fully go away. I think there will still be the need for bells and the want for that and the beauty of it. There are certain sounds that bring people back to a time in their life that may seem a little happier, perhaps, especially during the pandemic. This music has really inspired people. It's given people hope, and it's given people something to listen to and look out for every day.